You guys, check out this amazing Haywood Wakefield vanity. It was offered to us from a friend, and it is a very iconic furniture company. And they really were the forerunners of the mid-century modern design trend. This design style first came out in 1939. Ours is from the 40s. But isn't this just so reminiscent of something you'd find from the 50s and 60s? Our goal with this piece is to preserve the history while making it more modern and practical. So join us as we see if we can give this baby a second chance. I just wanted to take a moment to mention a little bit about the man who designed this. His name was Count Alexis de Saknovsky. He was very famous for designing quite a few different things, including and actually foremost, European race cars. Don't these handles look like sports car handles? And then after he moved to the States, he actually started to, you know, designing some furniture and other things. And the name of his design style is called the Streamline Series. There's stuff all over. It's gonna be a fun project though. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I know, does anyone use these anymore? Just wondering if, who's gonna buy it? I mean, there's gotta be like teenage girls that love doing their oh, hair and makeup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's an extension cord in here. I'm sure that was not original. <laughs> yeah, the owner said that he put that in there so that his wife could plug in her hair dryer and, and curling iron. Oh, and just store it in there? That's kind of a cool idea. It is a oh, cool idea. Look at this. This is cute. A little organizer. That must be built in because it has all the pieces for it. That is really cute. Cute. If I have any fun things. No, this is just simple on your side. Yeah. No. All right. Got to get this piece clean and get it sanded. One of the best things about Haywood Wakefield Furniture is that they are all made of solid wood. In this case, this is Northern Yellow Birch, and it was just amazing to work with. As you can see, there was water damage on top. I was a little bit afraid of there being a stain, but I started off with 80 grit sandpaper because I had no worries at all about burning through any veneer. The finish came off beautifully and there was no stain from that water damage, so that was really exciting. But as you all know, every piece has its challenges. And in this case, the sanding was a little bit difficult, actually a lot difficult, because there were so many curves to it. Curves along the edges, there were curves on the sides, everything was curved. I think we need to serve prep sander, Mom. <laughs> I would have loved to surf prep sander for this piece. So we sanded this entire piece four times. We started with the 80 grit just to get that varnish off and the layers of grime. We moved on to the 120 to start smoothing it out because you really don't want to jump up in grits too fast. So then after the 120, wiped it all down, moved on to the 180, and this really starts becoming extremely smooth at this point. But we're gonna be top coating this, and we want it to be baby butt smooth. Pops, that one's for you. <laughs> and so we moved up finally to the 220 grit on this wood. But unfortunately, there was still splotchiness on the top of the vanity so mom actually went all the way back down to 80 again to get rid of the blotchiness and then worked up in steps of all those grits and now the piece just looks incredible 
and love this vanity. But um, it's only 23 inches tall. Too short. Even with the legs. Like, Way too short. These are made for tinier women back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tinier than you if it's too short for you. I mean, we're talking, I think it's only like down here-ish. So we need to add some legs. I know we were considering making some, but I feel like if we kept the same style, that's just going to look a little weird. Yeah, it won't work. So I had pulled these out of our stash that we had left over from a project. They were the old couch legs. And these are going to give us an additional five inches. Do you think these are going to look okay with this? You know, it's a totally different style, but I think we should try it. Yeah, and we could paint them to kind of make them feminine and pretty. I don't know, we'll give it a try and see how it looks and hopefully it turns out great. I am so glad we saved these legs from that old couch. This is saving us tons of money in the long run every time we can reuse a piece from another piece of furniture. This vanity is really only the height of like a coffee table. So adding these extra five inches is gonna make a world of difference to the young woman who's gonna be sitting at this vanity in the future. And you know, I really actually do like this look. This is a very mid-century modern style to it. And these legs just add a little bit of funky. Okay guys, time to choose our paint. And since this is a really girly piece of furniture, we went ultra feminine with fusion mineral paint and we chose the color rose water. Unfortunately, it was just a little too pale for our taste. So we added a little bit of melange one in jet black and we put in a little bit of red acrylic paint just to give it a little punch up that color. The trick with making a custom color is you want to measure it out. And here we were using a little postage scale. And we, we measured this in grams and wrote down our measurements uh, in a little notebook so that we could replicate that formula in the future, which was a good thing because we did run out of paint. Now that the legs are all pink, we're just going to top coat them with this Modern Masters Dead Flat Finish. It's a varnish and it goes on matte, but surprisingly over this paint, it actually had the tiniest bit of sheen, which I actually love even more. We're calling this little stool the mushroom, and it is original with this vanity. It's pretty darn cute, but it has been recovered many, many times, and we're going to have to recover it again. We're going to have to do some sewing here, so I just cut this up, and I just took one of the little triangles and I'm going to use that as a pattern on my new fabric which I found of course at a thrift store for about three and a half dollars. I pinned it to the new fabric and cut several panels and I left a little bit extra for the seam allowance. And 
And hey, you guys, if you don't know how to sew, it's not rocket science. It isn't really hard, but you do. it does take some practice. Apparently, sewing is becoming a lost art because I see sewing machines all the time at our local thrift store, and it, they last forever. I've had my machine for over 30 years, and it still works perfect. I really encourage you to go out and get your own. It was pretty simple. You just have to cut the pieces and sew them and then fit it. And then take in some of the seams, make them a little bit tighter and, and just keep fitting it until it fits just right. More sanding. Boy, I really do wish we had a surf prep. This wasn't really cutting it with the orbital, especially while it was screwed on to the shroom. So we, I did have to disassemble this to, to really get to it. Mom, now that you've done the hard part, I'll take it from here. So let's get this piece top coated. We're gonna use that same Modern Masters dead flat varnish just to keep that raw natural looking wood, but keep it nice and protected. So I'll put a couple coats on and reattach it to our mushroom stool. Okay, you guys know I love my power tools. And buying this electric stapler has been one of my favorite purchases this year. For less than $30, it makes reupholstering a breeze. We've already used it for so many projects. It also is a nailer when we need to nail in big pieces of wood onto the backs of our furniture. And my husband even used it to put up the Christmas lights this year a definite score that makes your life so much easier. All right, let's flip her over, Mom. Give her a whirl. <laughs> I had someone ask me today, what qualifies as beanie weather in Phoenix, Arizona? Well, it's 65 and cloudy today, Burn. but we're wimps. <laughs> Sorry, I know many of you are freezing your tails off and having to do all your work inside right now. We are loving this weather and appreciating the fact that it's not 110 degrees. This vanity is missing the glass top that you sit at and do your makeup at, and it's like the actual counter where you do that. So we're gonna have to create something to replace that because we're not paying to have a piece of glass cut in that exact size. Right, yeah, it went right in here, it was circular, and it was really cool, but yeah, glass is very expensive to have custom sized. Right, so we were thinking about just getting a piece of wood and cutting it, making a draft out of a cardboard template, and cutting it, maybe decoupaging it to add a feminine flair. So we'll try that this time, see how it goes. In order to make a curved piece of wood, we need to start with a cardboard template because there's no way we can keep chopping off a little bit of wood with every adjustment. That's gonna be much easier to do with this box. So I'm kind of starting out with what I think is gonna be the basic shape, and then I'm just gonna keep tweaking it until it slides in that slot just right. So now that we have the top nice and snug, we need to add the curve to the bottom, kind of giving it a slight crescent moon shape. And I'm gonna start with just kind of freehanding what I think it should be, and then we're gonna get a little more precise. 
Okay, so I realized the freehanding wasn't going to cut it. I needed a template for my template to make sure the left side was symmetrical to the right side and that the curve was the same angle. So in comes this white piece of paper, cut it to match the curve I kind of freehanded, but now I'll make sure that the left angle is the same degrees as the right angle. I'm feeling really good about this cardboard template now. So let's get a piece of wood cut out. And actually, this is just a piece of laminate left over from another project. Using power tools might be one of my favorite parts of this job. And today we are using the jigsaw so we can trace this line and cut off that excess. So we're just gonna go along it. It's not gonna be perfect, but thankfully this laminate can easily be sanded down to be smoothed out. I just told you I love my power tools. And this is my first time using a router brought to you by our other big guns, our neighbor Jim. So he taught us how to use the router so that we could trim out all the way around the tray so it'll slide into that skinny slot perfectly, but then the rest of it still stays really thick so that if you lean all your weight on this tray, it's not going to break in half. Normally with a router, you use a guide and just follow the guide to route nice and straight, but unfortunately, because this is a curved piece, I had no way to create a curved guide, at least not that I knew of. So instead we kind of sketched about a quarter inch all the way around the tray and very slowly, little by little, I freehanded that router. And it took a few tries. We had to test it with the vanity where it didn't fit. We had to go back, but we eventually got it to fit perfectly in the vanity. Even though we wanted to preserve the history of this piece as much as possible, we went ahead and painted the handles. I know, I know, but you know, it just, they just needed a little pop of color. Does anyone recognize this board? This is the same board we used in our paint review video where we compared a bunch of different all-in-one mineral paints. If you haven't seen it, it's super informative. I'll leave the link right up here in the top right corner. Well, this part was so much fun. I had some leftover decoupage tissue paper by Prima by Redesign. And so I decided just to cut out some of these flowers and add a little pizzazz to our tray. If you haven't tried decoupage, you should. It's really fun and very easy. Basically, you find some tissue paper, and this is a really thick um, paper that I'm using, very easy to work with but you can use anything here. And take some varnish or poly or even Mod Podge and just paint that on. Apply your tissue paper, smooth out the wrinkles, let it dry and then trim it off and, and put some top coat over that.
So obviously this mirror did not come with the with our piece, but how can you sell a vanity without a mirror? So we found this on Facebook Marketplace and it's huge. We did scuff it up and sanded it and painted it to match our handles and legs. And look at it. It is pretty and pink, isn't it? All in all, we put five coats of the dead flat varnish on the top of this piece. But after the first coat, I did want to let you know that it raised the grain of the wood. And so you have to, you definitely have to go back over it with a piece of 600 grit sandpaper to make it smooth again. The sides and the drawers are not going to get as much use, so those require less coats. In this case, we put three on the drawers and two on the sides of this piece. This vanity came with a cord installed in one of the drawers for easy access for plugging in a hair dryer. But because of the liability, we decided we might as well just remove it, especially because it was taped together. I just love this piece. Do you remember what it looked like before? And here's what it looks like now. Well, did we meet our goal? Were we able to preserve its history while making it more modern and practical? We're sure happy with how it turned out. We can't wait to see who ends up with this piece in their home. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around. We hope that you'll make sure to subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment. Let us know what you think of this final piece. Have an incredible day. Aloha, guys. Aloha.